Good morning. Happy Resurrection Day. Let us all stand together as we sing a song that talks about the promise that we have. Because of the resurrection, we will live forever with our forever Lord. So let us sing together the song forever.
is Revelation 1 verse 18 I am he that liveth and was dead and behold I am alive forevermore will you pray with me dear God thank you for today and bringing us all together for your Easter worship and thank you for dying on the cross and being resurrected to save all of our sins amen be seated as the children come down for the children's sermon with Miss Tammy. Come on down, children. Good morning. Well, are you excited? What's today? Easter. You can wear white again. You can wear, sh um, what is that called, a jumpsuit? You can wear yellow. You can wear peach. Mars, you're the only fella. Where, oh, there's Gavin. Thank goodness. Ha, thank you, Gavin. Did you have fun at the Easter egg hunt if you got to come yesterday? Yeah. It was a blast. 2,000 eggs. 2,000 eggs. Unbelievable. Well, have you ever been afraid of anything? Oh, she's got her slap bracelet on, doesn't she? And she shared it with you? Wow, Miss Angel, that might be the best part of the day. They were sh you, sh you found it in your egg, but you're going to share it with your sister? Good job, good job. Well, yesterday was a lot of fun, but were you kind of wondering when you opened those eggs what was inside of them? Yeah. Like, there were snap bracelets. Oh, my gosh. There was candy. There was melted candy. <laughs> It was squeezing out of it. It was like a little. Uh, yeah, I couldn't even like fold it over. But did you still eat it? Yeah, I had to. <laughs> had to. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Who knew that the egg could be like a little oven? The little plastic egg just baked in that sunshine. And the perfect day. And oh my gosh, Tatum, how many hot dogs did you have? Three. <laughs> Supposedly, Miss Angel kept saying, if anybody wants another hot dog, if anybody, and she was taking her up on it. Well, have you ever been afraid of something? Oh, my gosh. What are you afraid of, Tatum? Snakes. Snakes, Neely. Oh, Mr. Bun's over there already shaking, just the mention of the word. Spiders. What about a bee? Here comes a bee. Yeah, Myers is running. He's already, I mean, he can spy a bee a mile away. And it's because he's gotten stung, and it hurts, doesn't it? Well, yeah, yes, yeah. Remember, okay, now think about, oh, what are you afraid of, Charlie? If I went to one, I would just That's how Mars is. Mars can f freeze. I'm not, I'm not sure just, just bees. There you go. Well, what about if you were a little seed and you got put down in the ground? It's dark, it's cold. Do you think that seed's scared? Yeah, and sometimes it's wet and gross. Yeah, worms are in there. Roly polies. Yeah. Wait just a minute, Myers. So, what happens to the little seed when the sun comes out? It grows up to the up to the, up the heavens, doesn't it? Well, that's kind of what happened to Jesus. Jesus died on the cross for us, right? Because our, we were doing some things that weren't good, and we were making bad mistakes. Yes, no sermon, Brother Tim, you're done. And so what happens is he goes up to heaven just like the seed. Can you be a little seed? You're a little seed. Okay, out comes the sun like today. 
grow up to the sky just like Jesus did. Well, this morning I was afraid because I was making a breakfast casserole. First of all, I've never worn pants for Easter, ever. I've always had a dress on. So when I was telling Mr. Bunn, I said, Mr. Bunn, this is my first Easter wearing pants. And he went, no big deal to him. But to Mimi, I was thinking, oh my gosh, I, I don't, I'm not wearing my fancy shoes or hose or a fancy frilly dress. I'm wearing just pants, which, but I wore a really bright top, but I couldn't find a dress I liked. So I was kind of afraid, but when I put it on, you know the first thing Lindsay said when I came through the door? Mom, that's a really pretty top. So I went, yes, yes. So I was filled with joy again. I wasn't afraid that she didn't say, Mom, you're wearing pants for Easter? But the other thing that happened is, that made me afraid this morning, is I was making an egg casserole. And I, Aunt Shelba's egg casserole is mm, so good. It's got sausage in it, eggs, cheese, anything with cheese. Yeah, lots of cheese. And um, I'd never made it before, and I thought, I wonder if it's going to work. Well, then all of a sudden, I was pouring it in there, but I was filled with joy because I wanted, oh, man, I'm really going to be excited about this egg casserole because it's Aunt Shelba's, and I'm making it for my family. And Aunt Shelba's like 80. And so I thought, oh, I went to put the croutons in, and I only had one and a half cups, and I was supposed to have four. <laughs> oh, that's exactly how I felt. So Mr. Bunn kept saying, it'll be all right. It'll just be a little juicy. Well, that's not good, because do you want to... Ju you like juicy, but do you like... Me too. Juicy eggs. I do not like juicy eggs. Well, it kept baking. I do not like juicy eggs. Me either. Mine have to be like almost erasers. That's what Mr. Bunn says. So... I was, I was looking in the oven, and I kept going, oh, it's working, it's okay, it's doing okay. I put it on the timer, and I timed it, and I stepped my knife down in it, and it wasn't juicy, it worked. Now, it may not have enough croutons on it, but I was filled with joy again because I think it's going to taste pretty good. I'll let you know how it comes out. Yeah, those pears were hard. Well, that little seed was afraid, wasn't it? When it's down in that yucky, yucky ground. But it keeps hoping it's going to be a what? A green bean plant. It's going to be a, a flower. And it keeps growing to the sky. And that's what happens, and that's what's exciting about Easter. Because today, Jesus arose from the dead. And Mary Magdalene and some of the, and, and some of the women got to sing. In the Bible, in Matthew 28, 8, it says, So departing quickly from the tomb, that's where Jesus was, it said, afraid yet filled with joy. They were afraid because they saw, the ladies saw him die on the cross, didn't they? They saw God, or Jesus being... Yes, they saw that, didn't they? They saw that big rock go in front of the tomb to, so that he couldn't get out anymore. But then in the morning when they came, what happened? He was gone, he was gone Charlie. <laughs> but can you imagine, what do you think they felt? Kind of, kind of creepy. Yeah, exactly. Kind of like... <gasps> But then when they were walking back, so they're, they're thinking, did all that stuff that Jesus told us, is it true? Did it really happen? And then who did they meet? Jesus. <laughs> and they were just filled with joy. But can you imagine, don't you think they were a little afraid? We really saw him, yeah. And you know what he says? Hello. He says, greetings. I know, just greetings, Myers. Like he, I'm, today he might do a, face bump, a, a fist bump, or he might do a high five, or he might just say, what's up? <laughs> or, nod your, or nod your head. Have you ever walked past somebody and they just go, Gavin does that a lot, Miss Bun. Yeah. <laughs> but did he do that? Yeah. Jesus said, greetings, do not be afraid. Will you pray with me? Sounds like you all have learned a lot this week in the month of, um, during the month of Lent. Will you pray with me? Dear Lord, may we be filled with joy today. 
filled with joy that we know that we have hope, we have your love, and now we are free of our sins, free of the bad stuff and the bad choices that we've made, thanks to your son. May we be filled with your joy because that's what you meant when you said greetings. Do not be afraid. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Happy Easter. Get your this way. Let's stand together again as we sing Easter Hallelujah. Oh. 
I love Miss Tammy's children's sermon this morning as she was talking about joy. I think the only thing better than Tammy's children's sermon this morning was the kids stole the show. I love their answers. They've got Easter down. They do have Easter down. I'm, I'm sitting here, and I guess the reason it hit me so hard, Tammy, is I'm just full of joy this morning. We think back uh, a year ago, Easter, where were we? And this morning, we gathered together as the people of God in the house of the Lord. I want to give you an opportunity, anyone who wants to express their joy this morning, for being in the house of the Lord this morning. Anyone have a testimony of what it means to be in church this Easter morning? They would want to share. Amen. Real big and loud. You have to stand up so we can hear you. Praise God. Thank, praise God. That may have been why Jesus was telling me I need to ask for testimonies this morning. What an awesome. Anyone else? I don't want to leave anyone out. Expressing joy for being in the house of God on this Easter morning. Praise God. That's why I'm here. Praise God. I praise Him for all He's done for me. Thankful for this beautiful day. And I'm going to praise Him for what He's going to do. Because He says it in His Word. Thank you so praise much. God. Praise God. Thank you, Barry. Anyone else? Anyone else? Real big and loud, Meyer, so we can hear you. Jesus is risen. That is reason enough. Because he's risen, because he's alive, we are invited into his presence. And what a joyous morning as we gather. I just want to invite you now to bow your hearts as together we go before the throne of all thrones. We praise the one who was dead but is now alive forevermore. And because he is risen, the promise is sure. We too will live forever with him if we give our life and give our heart for he is risen. Will you pray with me? Father, on this, on this resurrection morning, our hearts are filled with joy at your invitation to enter into your house. And as Barry has testified this morning, Lord, uh, it's been a tough year. With all the obstacles thrown in our way, we've stumbled through. But as Becky testified, Lord, we are reminded this morning we're never alone. You're always with us. You've walked with us every step of the way, even in the difficult moments when we didn't take time to notice. So on this morning, as we enter into your presence, help us to humble our hearts in your presence. Be awed at your greatness. And Lord, may this be the day that all who are called by your name, we recommit our life to journey hand in hand with you. 
And yet the greater prayer would be if there would be one who has never professed you as Lord and Savior. Oh, what a day to be born again. Father, this is your worship service. We thank you for inviting us to share in your joy. Meet us here. Transform us from what we are into what you've called us to be. For your glory and your glory alone we pray. Amen. Amen. but all we are, all we have, and all we hold. We open our lives to you for the service of your kingdom. Please bless and work through our offering today, our lives this week, and lead us to follow you, Christ, in all that we do and say. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Do you feel the shadows deepen? But do you know that all the dark won't stop the light from getting through? Do you wish that we could see it all made new? Is all creation groaning? 
is a new creation coming and is the glory of the Lord to be the light within our midst is it good that we remind ourselves of this Is anyone worthy? Is anyone whole? Is anyone able to break the seal and open the scroll? The Lion of Judah, who conquered the grave. He is David's root and the Lamb who died to ransom the slave. Is he worthy? Is he worthy? Is he worthy of this? He is. Does the Father truly love us? Does the Spirit move among us? And does Jesus our Messiah hold forever those he loves? Does our God intend to dwell again with us? Is anyone worthy? Is anyone whole? Is anyone able to break the seal and open the scroll? The Lion of Judah, who conquered the grave. He is David's root and the Lamb who died to ransom the slave. From every people and tribe, every nation and tongue he has made us a kingdom and priest to god to reign with the sun is he worthy is he worthy of all blessing and honor and glory is he worthy is he worthy is he worthy of this he is is he worthy is he worthy he is is he worthy is he worthy? He is. He is. Is he worthy? This morning, I'm going to invite you to take your Bible and turn with me to the Gospel according to Mark. There in the 16th chapter, we will find a traditional Easter morning uh, uh, text as we share the first eight verses together. Mark chapter 16 beginning with verse 1, as you find your passage for those who are able, we invite you to stand in reverence to the Holy Word of God. Mark chapter 16, will you listen for the Word of God? And when the Sabbath was passed, 
Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome had brought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came into the sepulcher at the rising of the sun and they said among themselves, Who will roll away the stone from the door of the sepulcher? And when they looked, they saw the stone was rolled away, for it was very great. And entering into the sepulcher, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in white garment, and they were very afraid. And he said to them, Be not affrightened. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. But go your way. Tell his disciples and Peter that he goeth before you into Galilee, and there you shall see him as he said unto you. And they went out quickly, and they fled from the sepulcher, and they trembled and were amazed. Neither said they anything to any man, for they were afraid. Will you join me as we ask the Lord's blessing upon the written word of God. Father, we thank you so much for your love poured out for us. We thank you for Friday. Even in that moment when we couldn't understand defeat was actually victory. That humiliation was actually glory. But with the rising of the sun this morning, we see your greatness. We humble at your promise. And we praise you for your truth. Open our hearts now that we might hear your word. Help us then, Lord, as we hear to surrender our fears, our concerns, our questions, and allow you to be glorified in our life. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. And all the God's people said, you may be seated. Wow, what a difference a year makes, amen? I want to begin this morning by simply saying, I love Easter. I am so excited to be in the house of God this morning. I have uh, thrilled all week long with the smell of lilies filling the sanctuary. I didn't realize how much I missed them until last year. I love Easter, and I love being in the house of God this morning. I, I, you know, I, when you think of all of our holidays, I mean, I love Christmas and Thanksgiving and New Year's, but put aside the various traditions in the how we celebrate our holidays, and consider only the reason for our celebration, and clearly, let me say this morning, Easter stands alone. There is absolutely no reason for celebration that could could ever compare with Jesus' eternal victory over sin, death, and grave. Because he lives. That's Easter. That's the reason we celebrate. I know uh, if you're like me in the days leading up to this Holy Week, you may have heard the so-called religious purists attempting to discount the Easter celebration, calling it a manufactured holiday created only to perpetuate a pagan celebration. Others say if celebrated by the church at all, it should at least be renamed Resurrection Sunday. My answer, because he lives. Because he lives. And then enter the politically correct police. You should have known they were coming, right? And now we hear them demanding a spring bunny and spring eggs and a spring hunt. And Come on, folks. 
Easter egg hunts have been part of our most beloved childhood memories. How about 2,000 eggs this past Saturday? Isn't that pretty cool? Even if they actually have very little to do with Easter, right? Or do they? Or do they? For that reason, uh, I brought some toys with me this morning. (laughs) For those who uh, cannot see, that's an Easter egg. This one's special because my granddaughter made it for me. Be honest with you, I thought these things were extinct. I didn't know anybody made them like this anymore. When we were kids, this is how we made them. When my girls were little, this is how we made them. But now that my girls are all grown up and my girls are moms, now they're, that's too much work. Now they're too messy, right? So today, we use candied eggs or plastic eggs. And to be honest, I do like the plastic eggs because when you open them up, there's a prize inside, isn't there, Maley? You can stuff them with candy. I don't know about you guys, but my grandkids prefer the ones with the dollar bills inside. I brought with me this morning two examples of what I'm talking about. The first is your gift that you received this morning from the children's ministry when you came in. I hope everybody got one. If you didn't, please be sure to get one before you leave. On the outside, it simply says, be kind. I wonder where we ever got an idea like that. But when you open it up, Did I mention there's a prize inside? This one is a lapel pin inscribed with Luke 6.31. Loosely translated, treat others the way you would like to be treated. Or just be kind. Amen? Amen. The next one is a very special egg. This one happened to appear on my desk 11 years ago, Easter morning. The color's significant because Herschel always told me blue was his favorite color. And then I explained to him that blue was the color of God and that sealed it. That was forever his color. And 11 years ago, I walked in my office on Easter morning to find this egg sitting on my desk. You open it up. Did I mention there's a prize inside? This one was simply a note from across the great divide, if you know what I'm saying. It simply says, love you, signed Herschel. My favorite eggs, though, of all the eggs are the resurrection eggs. I love the resurrection eggs because they help us tell the story of Easter Let me show you what I'm talking about. If I take this egg, did I mention there's a prize inside? If I open this one, it's just a little cross. Looks a little insignificant, doesn't it? There's nothing insignificant about the cross of Calvary. This reminds you Reminds me, we were bought with a great price. Because we owed a debt we could not pay. 
Jesus paid a debt he did not owe. We go the next day, we open it up. Did I mention there's a prize inside? Just a little nail. Nothing to compare with the great spikes that pierced our Lord, that he willingly embraced to express his love for you. When we open this one, what might be inside? Think there's a prize? (laughs) This one's just a little rock. But maybe it will remind you of the great stone that sealed the Easter tomb. Make no mistake about it. Jesus was fully dead. And I want you to know this morning, that great stone was not rolled there to keep him inside. No one thought he was going anywhere. That stone was there to keep us from looking in. But God rolled away the stone. Not to let Jesus out, but to allow us to look in. Well, here's a shock for you. Here's the next egg. What do you think is going to be inside? Absolutely nothing. And that's the most marvelous egg of all. Because the tomb is empty. He is not there. He is risen. And he is alive forevermore. I got one last egg I want to share with you. This one's a little different because it really doesn't speak of the resurrection. It speaks more of a promise. We open it up and there's just a little piece of white cloth. It doesn't look like very much, but it serves to remind me of the grave napkin that... John and Peter discovered as they entered the vacated tomb. Understand, in Jewish custom, the sudarion, the grave napkin, was placed across the face, kind of like our mask. They look like grave masks, don't they? But the sudarion was placed across the face with one when they laid him in the grave. Now, in Jewish custom... It was customary that if I was sitting at table and I rose from table, I discard my napkin that is a compliment to my host and it says, I am finished. It was a wonderful meal. Thank you for having me. But if for some reason I had to excuse myself during the course of the meal and I was not done with my meal, I would take my napkin and I'd very politely fold it and place it by my plate. And that was an announcement. I'm coming back. The napkin reminds me of the eternal promise. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. If it were not so, I would have told you. I come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, you may be also. And that's the promise of Easter. Did I mention I love Easter? But it might be a fair question, where did this practice of using eggs come from? I mean, it's part of the Easter celebration. Where does that fit in to why we do what we do? Is that a fair question? Well, let me start by saying, if we 
go back to the origin of our word Easter. In Hebrew or in Aramaic, the word is Pascha, P-A-S-H-A, meaning Passover. Translated to Greek, the word becomes Pascha. Translated to English, we get our word Easter. And so, a very over simplification would suggest Easter as the fulfillment of the Jewish Passover. No gas, no Oz. Let me try that again. An oversimplification would define Easter as the fulfillment, the completion, the answer, the final word of the Jewish Passover. In fact, if you do a little research in your word, you'll find that Easter is only mentioned once in the entire New Testament, and it is used exactly for that purpose. In the 12th chapter of Acts, Herod's attempting to please the Jews by arresting Peter during the days of unleavened bread. Now that phrase speaks of the week of Passover, of which the Passover Seder is scheduled or celebrated on the first night. And then in verse 4, Easter appears to be used to speak of the fulfillment or the completion of the Passover week. Still allow me to say, for the Christian and the Jew, there remains a stark difference between the two celebrations. For the Jew, Passover celebrates God's redemption from slavery to Pharaoh. That God's uh, 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 re- redemption uh, 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 of, from slavery. It commemorates the blood of the Lamb. The redemption price for the plague of the firstborn. For, but as Christians, we celebrate God's redemption not from Pharaoh, but the slave to sin, death and grave. It celebrates God's redemption and commemorates Jesus Christ, the true Lamb of God, paying the ultimate sin debt for whosoever believeth in Him may have life and never perish. For the Christian, Easter is the celebration of love's victory over death and the divine provision of life eternal in the presence of our Lord. There's a big difference there, don't you agree? One is earthly, one is eternal. Praise God for the eternal. Still, let me say this. Almost everything we do in church can be traced back to our Jewish roots from the candles on our altar to the steeple on our roof and yes even our eggs at Easter if you'll remember when Jesus gathered with his disciples there in the upper room they gathered to celebrate the Passover meal and included on that Passover plate would have been a roasted hard-boiled egg known as the biatza, the biatza. Now, for the Jew, the biatza stood as the symbol of the sacrifice made earlier at the temple. Remember, the lamb had to be slain. The egg stood as reminder of the sacrifice paid. And according to the Talmud, it was customary that they would place a shoulder bone of a lamb, literally an arm, on the Passover plate next to the egg known as the biatza. Now, in the Aramaic, that egg was called the baya, B-E-Y-A, meaning to pray, please, as in please, May it please the merciful God to redeem us with an uplifted hand. See the connection? In years following the destruction of the temple in A.D. 70, the symbolism of the egg was extended to include also a sign of mourning for the loss of the holy temple. 
We all know the longer you cook an egg, the harder it will become. And so in this way, the hard-boiled egg came to symbolize a determined nature of a faithful Jew to be resilient even in the adversity and the tragedy. That would be a good lesson for 2020. Be resilient even in the face of adversity. Yet this morning, as Christians, let me say this, the egg was never intended to, to, to symbolize grief or death, but for us, the egg is a symbol of life. I love the illustration of the seed going into the ground. Use the illustration maybe of a bird within the egg. See, it's true that the Easter story begins in death. Mark and all the gospel writers affirmed it was final. The women came to the tomb early, bringing sweet spices for what? To anoint the dead body. In fact, Mark is very clear. Their greatest fear is who is going to roll away the stone and allow them interest. Make no mistake, Jesus was fully dead. Now that's an important uh, 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 to understand because Easter is not about a resuscitation. That has happened before, right? We had the, uh, a G, uh, the raising of Jairus' daughter. We had the uh, uh, resuscitation of the son of the widow of Nan. The Easter story is not even about a restoration of life as it was with Lazarus being called back from a tomb. What's the difference? In each of those examples, life was restored temporarily. Another death awaited. But with Easter, but with Easter, Easter is the story of life because Jesus, his victory over death and grave is final. Praise God. Jesus came forth from the grave with a new life, an eternal life, and it's that very same life he promises to share with every single person person who believe upon his name and then as such the egg stands symbolically of this new life that seed sprouting the chicken busting forth from the shell you know the baby bird may have been entombed in the egg but as life is formed that shell is cracked the tomb is open and new life comes forth. But I also want to say this morning, the egg is symbolic of each and every one of us. What are you talking about, preacher? I've often said one of my most basic convictions is that Jesus Christ never died on the cross to make you and I better people. He died to make us new creations for all who come to Jesus there is a promise of new life eternal life symbolically then the carnal man is entrapped within our own tomb but as a total trans transformation takes place that shell is cracked and the new life comes forth in his work, Mere Christianity, C.S. Lewis made a very interesting observation. Lewis wrote, it may be hard for a bird, I mean, an egg to turn into a bird. It would be a jolly sight harder for it to learn to fly while remaining an egg. We are all eggs at present. And you can't go on indefinitely just being an ordinary, decent egg. We all must hatch or go bad. Hatch or go bad. 
Interesting statement, don't you think? See, I, I think what Lewis is suggesting is if we, if we want to fly, if we wish to do, do more than just rot away, we got to first crack the egg. Lewis says hatch. John the baptizer says repent. Jesus said you must be born again. It's all synonymous, folks. It's the same process. It's the same journey. We hatch out of the old and into the new, out of the shell into life. It's a new birth. It's a totally new creation. And all who experience this life in Jesus Christ cannot stay as we are. We must be born anew into an Easter victory or remained imprisoned in our homemade tombs. It's your choice. But remember, at some point, eventually, if left long enough, even a good egg will start to stink. How's that for being blunt? Hatch or go bad. That's a choice. It's really that simple. This morning as the Holy Spirit speaks to your heart, I invite you to hear the Easter invitation. The tomb is empty. Explaining why His presence here at this altar is warm. This morning you're invited to the place where all eggs can be hatched, where new life can take flight, and where a growing faith can learn to soar like eagles. Whatever you need this morning, as we stand and as we sing, the altar awaits. What a morning, an Easter morning to experience or re-experience the risen Christ. Whatever you need as we sing, will you stand? morning planned waiting ahead we hope that all who feel comfortable will stay for our Easter sun rose breakfast uh, we will be gathering in the in the fellowship hall as we leave this place this morning we're going to do the blessing for the morning meal here as our closing prayer and then as you make your way to the the fellowship hall we do ask that you observe all COVID social distancing. The uh, plates will already be filled for you. Just pick a plate. There are tables there in the uh, fellowship hall. We do ask that you social distance and sit with your 
with your pods. And if we have not enough room in the fellowship for your to be comfort, comfortable with your social distancing, feel free to move to Sunday school rooms throughout the church, and that will be acceptable. Is there any word before we dismiss? Remember, immediately after uh, uh, our breakfast this morning, 9.30 will be our Sunday school hour as normal. Uh, and then, of course, our Easter worship service this morning at 10.30. We're excited about presenting one day and uh, encourage you to come and worship with us. Word on any heart before we dismiss to the fellowship hall. Acolytes, will you come? And in lieu of a pastoral charge and blessing this morning, will you hear our blessing on the morning meal? Father, we thank you so much for the opportunity just to be in your house this morning, to be able to celebrate your victory over sin, death, and grave. And as we go through the celebration this morning, Lord, we pray not only will this be our opportunity to tell others of your, uh, uh, your victory over sin, death, and grave, but Lord, may we re-experience that victory, make it new to our hearts, restore us from where we have uh, uh, fallen away, and draw us back into your presence. Use us for your glory. Now, Lord, we ask for your blessing upon our morning meal. We pray a blessing upon all who have prepared, uh, whether preparing the food or preparing the, the area for, for our meal. Help us, Lord, to proclaim you in fellowship as we proclaim you in worship. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. And all the God's people said, Amen. Amen.